Daniel Crosslink, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm having a look at the Ethelson Q5. It's a Delta printer. It's actually the first Delta printer that I am building. Uh, also the first Delta printer on this channel. It has been sent to me by Ethelson for free. So thanks for that. Still, this is a completely unbiased story. So I'm not getting paid to do, say anything positive or negative about this thing. Uh, as you can expect from this channel, it's gonna be very honest. All the findings, all the pros and cons gonna be included. What we're gonna start with today is the unboxing, the build and a few first test prints. As usual, there's gonna be video chapters in the description of this video. So use those to jump to the parts that you're interested in mostly. And without any further delay, let's start with the unboxing. So when the package arrived, I was seeing some damage on the outside of the box. So I was curious if anything would be broken on the inside, but uh, luckily that wasn't the case. Actually, this packaging is done really nice. Everything is quite well dampened. Every part has its own place, so nothing was broken. And you can see there's lots of accessories inside. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. And uh, everything was in the box as expected. Nothing was missing. Um, although I was thinking about, um, they could have included a bigger manual, but I'm talking about that in a moment. So far, everything looks fine. So I've put everything on the table. Basically, these are the parts. This is the electronics case with the power supply, the heated bed, we have some power cables. We have the vertical extrusions where the three motors are running the vertical uh, rails and that's gonna drive the print head. And we have some additional filament, some sensor here for the bed leveling. We have also some very short actual usage manuals, but there's no build instructions in the box. I don't know if this is just me, if this is just my printer that doesn't have a instruction manual how to build the printer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look up on the internet if I can find um, something of how to build the printer and then we're gonna come back and start building it. A few moments later. So in fact, after triple checking, I found that the super short manual also contains an even shorter part with build instructions. But honestly, I went directly to YouTube and found some much better instructions there, which I followed. So the first thing I did is to mount the vertical extrusions and connect the motor cables. Okay, so we mounted all the three vertical extrusions with the motors, uh, which run the, the arms that hold the extruder and that is going to be turned to its head like this. And it seems to be that we need to align the display with the logo on the heating bed. So here's a place where the cable comes out on the bottom and then we need to put it down like this. So the logo is aligned with the display and then we can fix these three arms to that bottom plate with the heat bed. And let's do that now. Today's video is sponsored by the like button. Please hit the like button if you find value watching this content. This is going to tell YouTube to push this video out to more people. It's gonna help me grow the channel. So thanks for that and Back to the video. So now we built the base frame. Basically, um, we are ready to mount the rods that drive the print head. And these rods are coming pre-mounted. Still, we need to double check if all those little screws are really tight. So nothing is loose. So that's one thing to double check. The way how this is fixed is we take um, these arms and then we're gonna fix this first one to the right side of this holder and then we take a second rod and do the very same on the other side and also fix that these holder rods 
which are supposed to hold the hot end in place, we fixed all three pairs to these vertical motor extrusions. And now it's finally time to fix the print head to those rods. Seems to be that there's again a specific way how this print head is mounted. And then we can connect the extrusions and the rods to the hot end just by yeah, basically tightening all the screws in. So I'm going to start with one side of the arms, and then I'm going to do the other side. And again, I'm using the hex driver to fix all these mounting screws. So double checking that everything is really fixed and tight. On the first glance, you can already notice how this is going to work and you can quite obviously see how the Delta printer is different from probably printers that you, you already know. So we have these three independent motors and each motor can move the print head in a, in a direction. And when they work all together, that's the magic of the Delta printer. They all work together and they're gonna move the print head in the desired position. And also at the same time, they can move it up. And um, you can already see this printer is actually pretty high, but uh, a lot of the print space that is, you might think that this is actually usable space, but it's not because of course you have these rods here, which are blocking off the upper part of uh, the print area basically, but that's how the Delta printer looks like and works like. Uh, still the advantages of this design is that moving the print head around is doable much faster because you don't have this heavy print bed that you need to move around. Okay, so this is the filament holder. It's gonna be mounted on top of the printer frame with two additional screws. Very easy to do, obviously. Okay, fine. So the next step to do is to connect the electronics case cables that come from the top to the extruder, basically to the hot end. Uh, these are the motor um, connectors for the fans and also the temperature sensors and also the uh, cables that power the actual heater in the hot end. And um, these cables are luckily marked with different colors. So you normally you cannot um, do anything wrong here. Just connect the right uh, colors to the right colors, the same colors to the same colors. And then you should be fine, hopefully. Okay, so before we talk about the bed leveling sensor, there's one last thing to do here to connect the heated bed with um, the electronics case. There's two cables. One is the, for the heater and one is for the temperature sensor. Pretty easy to uh, identify those plugs here. You can't do anything wrong. And then we have the PTFE tube uh, coming from the hot end. Just plug this in into the extruder. Just push it in until it really hits the end and then we are ready. So all the cables are connected. Just one thing that we didn't connect yet is the auto leveling sensor. Actually, it's not like on other printers where the bed leveling sensor is mounted permanently and is always working before a print starts. This one's a little bit different. This is actually attached magnetically here underneath the print head. And you can imagine that this only works if you're not printing. So what this is going to do is going to measure the distance to the print bed, and then you have to take it off while you're actually printing. Here there's on the print surface, there is a little bit of a protective film that we need to take off. We just need to figure out where this starts. So I'm going to peel this off because otherwise uh, prints are not going to stick. Actually, you cannot really level this bed and there's no way to change the distance to the print heads. It's gonna be all done through these arm movements. Uh, really interested how this is going to work out. I mean, that's the reason why I hate sample filament because sample filament, it's like, it's not even on a spool, it's just, um, in a little package and then it's basically gonna go everywhere it wants. So that's the reason why I, I really hate those sample filament spools. Got some filament here. Um, what do you think about orange? I, I like orange and let's just attach this 
to the spool holder. The way how this works is I'm gonna clip it off a little bit and then it's gonna be inserted here on the other side into the extruder motor. There's an inlet here and we're just pushing it in, pulling that little lever here and then get it pushed to the hot end. So we need to heat it up now, get the power connected and uh, use the menu on the printer to start printing. I'm gonna show you in the close-up how this printer menu works. You have a touch screen here, which is uh, easy to understand. So first thing to do here is to go and preheat for PLA. And it's gonna take a while for the printer to heat up to 210 degrees and 50 degrees bed temperature. And then we can push the filament through and see uh, it's coming out of the nozzle. So let's do this first. And then we're gonna run some first test prints. There's actually no zip ties coming in the package, but I'm still using zip ties because um, I found uh, on the internet, there's some instruction that say, um, tie together the PTFE tube and the cables so they don't kind of uh, get around and get in each other's way. And um, yes, I'm gonna do this right now because I think it's a good idea. Um, so we have everything a little bit better connected here, um, more tightly together. Probably not really to the top, but I'm gonna stop here in the middle because you can also see if we move this up. Um, yeah, then it's bending around a little bit, but it's, it's, I think this way it's actually much, much better. Let's clip this off. Seems that the hot end is now heated up and we can just pull this lever and push through the filament and you can see and our orange filament is coming out of the nozzle. So that's good. Okay, so the next step according to the internet manual is that we're going to connect the auto leveling sensor. The way how it's done, as I said, is a magnetic attachment and then we're connecting this three pin cable here. So this cable and then we can turn on the printer again. And then we go to the tool menu, probably, and there's an auto level button here that we can push and then we can push that auto level button and confirm that we want to do it. And now I'm curious what's going to happen. Seems that it's going up first and then it's going down and probably now doing its auto leveling procedure. Seems that it did the corners and now it's going to the center, probably doing more probing points or probably doing a second run, I don't know. Okay, it looks like it's doing actually mesh bed leveling and really doing uh, more points. Okay, so the next step seems to be that we are going to bring the nozzle down again to the zero position. Before actually we do that, we should remove the sensor, I think it's gonna tell me to remove the leveling switch module. Yes, it does. So I need to disconnect it and remove it. And then I need to confirm that. Now it's going down again to the zero position. And now we need a piece of paper to actually set the, the desired distance to the print bed. So we have the perfect distance, the perfect pressure. So I'm going to use my piece of paper here and push it between the nozzle and the print bed. And now it's still pretty loose. So I would say regarding that this is a glass plate, uh, we should actually go down and press a little bit more against that paper. This is also done through the manual. This is actually quite hard already. Um, but there's also filament coming out of the nozzle. So if you just inserted the filament like I did, probably you need to rub it a little bit first and then you'll notice that it's getting easier to move that paper after you basically remove the 
the filament that it's oozing out now, this is a little bit too much. So I would say I'll keep it at this distance where I can feel paper resistance, but it's not really blocking the paper from moving. And then I have a save button and we should be done with the calibration now. It's now time probably to check if there's anything that we can print right away from the SD card that's coming with the printer. Um, just inserting this into the printer's SD card slot, which is here on the top. And let's check if we have something that we can print. Let's see, we have a print menu here and we can probably print something that is called test elephant. And I'm gonna confirm this and we're gonna watch now how this is going to look when it's printing. So the printer is currently heating up and I'm really curious for the first test print. So we're gonna have a look at the time lapse in a second and it's just starting to print. And I'm really curious if it's going to bring down the first layer successfully. Currently that seems to be the case. At least it looks like there is something coming down on the print bed. And in a few seconds, we're gonna have a look at this first result. I'm really curious to see it, if it's better or worse than things that I've seen from other printers like the Ender 3 V2 or the ANIT A8 that are highly modified. Really, really curious to see that. It seems to be that it has a few issues bringing down that first layer, probably I would have to increase the pressure just a tiny bit. Uh, I was a little bit too careful, obviously, but it still seems to print fine. I'm curious if it's gonna stick. So that's uh, the thing that we need to watch out for in, uh, in a few minutes. But so far, it's still bringing down layers. And uh, if we're lucky, this is uh, still gonna turn out well, but we have to see when it's done. Two hours later. So the test print is finished. Took about two hours and 10 minutes. Let's take it off the build plate. So I'm curious how much force I need to take it off, but it's sticking pretty well, actually. But yeah, it's coming off. So not a big issue. So looking at this, it's really impressive how nice the surface actually comes out, especially in the rounded areas. There is no ripples, there is no ringing, no stringing visible. Pretty impressive uh, for a first result. So I'm really looking forward to do more test prints on this printer, especially larger things, also things with overhangs and things that might cause stringing or ringing and printing faster, of course. So this printer is going into the print lab now for about two to three weeks, depending on how much I actually can print in that time, probably a few hundred hours, as I told you. And then you will see my final review of the FSON Q5. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.